Hi, I'm Alex Grieve, better known as Ivy Crazy, and this is How to Be Successful in FPV, Part 13, Troubleshooting Your Video Link. Everyone who flies FPV is going to have video link problems from time to time. Even the pros who have been flying for years will end up troubleshooting their video link to find the problem. When troubleshooting your video link, you need to ask yourself this question. What problem am I trying to solve? Now, I know what almost everybody says is, I want longer range. Well, that's the solution, gaining more range. The problem lies in one of four areas. Multipath interference, noise floor, a Fresnel zone violation, or simply being outside the range of the receiver's sensitivity. Multipath interference is your own signal bouncing off of an object, be it the ground, a building, trees, vehicles, or other devices, and entering your receiver slightly delayed. This causes the video to mix and tear at the sides and results in distortion and sometimes complete video loss. There are several ways to defeat this, and it, most of it is in the receive antenna. You can choose an antenna with a high front to back ratio, in other words, it listens very strong in front and not very well behind it, or an antenna with a high axial ratio. Now, an antenna with a high front to back ratio, such as a crosshair, works well because it only listens here in a 115 or so degree beam out in front. So any object behind you that your own signal bounces off enters the back of the antenna where it's not listening. So it comes in at significantly lower strength. Thus, the aircraft is coming in at a much stronger signal even though it has taken several bounces and still enters the antenna, it's just entering a null. Another way to defeat multipath interference is axial ratio. Axial ratio is the ability of an antenna to rotate the signal well. Now, when using axial ratio to defeat multipath problems, you need high axial ratio on both ends. Both the transmit and the receive side need high axial ratio. Think about it like this. If I'm a football player, I'm a receiver, and I'm trying to receive a pass, so the quarterback's throwing a Hail Mary, just bombing this thing. The probability of me catching that ball is proportional to how tight the spiral is. That's axial ratio. A low axial ratio would be a wobbly football. A high axial ratio would be a nice tight spiral. Obviously, the tighter the spiral, the better chance I have of catching that football. Thus, the higher the axial ratio, the better the receiver will capture your video feed. So choosing an antenna with the highest axial ratio is going to result in the highest video clarity. Now you can combine that. You can combine axial ratio with front to back ratio in a package like the crosshair. The crosshair has high front to back ratio, which means it listens very well out in front, but not very well to the sides or behind it, and is a high axial ratio, which means it also spirals a signal very, very tight. So that's how you defeat multipathing. But what if your problem isn't multipathing? What if it's noise floor? Well, what's noise floor? Noise floor is defined as the amount of RF traffic on your band being received by your receiver. Now, remember that you're not the only one using your signal. You're not the only one using your band. There are people, thousands of them, all over the world using your band right now. The thing is, they're in different locations. And in fact, even you can be competing on your own band with your own LRS systems. Some of these LRS systems are just not filtered very well, and they scream in your ear. So how do you defeat it? Well, first you need to identify the source of the interference and then get away from it. Let's say the source of the interference is a trans video transmission tower five miles, 80 degrees off of center here. I have one very good way to defeat that. Instead of using an omnidirectional antenna that covers in all areas, which will receive that just as well as my airplane at the same distance, I can choose a directional antenna such as a crosshair, helical, or pepper box. 
Now, that does not mean they all work equally well. Remember that the pepper box has a 180 degree beam, so not, it listens 90 degrees off of center. So that 80 degree off of center signal is going to be received by the pepper box stronger than my uh, crosshair or my helical antenna. So if I've got a competing source off in the distance, I'm going to want to choose an antenna with a narrower beam such that it won't pick up that competing source nearly as well as my aircraft. Now, if the competing source, let's say that competing source is behind you, directly behind you. Well, now the pepper box does well because it doesn't hear very well directly behind itself. But this helical, because it has that rear lobe in the back, which allows you to fly behind it, will also pick up that competing signal fairly well. Now that does not, however, the signal from the, will enter the back of the helical much weaker than it will an omni antenna. So let's say the signal isn't a, another transmission somewhere else. It's actually in your own hands, your LRS. UHF radios or LRS systems, uh, let's say their filtering often leaves much to be desired. Uh, I, I, in testing, I found many of these systems have little or no filtering at all, and they have harmonics or just spurious emissions on your video band. And without a spectrum analyzer, you can't tell whether or not it's this thing that's actually defeating your own video. So what do you do if you suspect that, hey, I've got uh, interference from my LRS radio? Well, first of all, the from an, noise from an LRS radio usually looks like banding. It usually looks like a uh, black and white lines coming straight across the screen that just kind of scatter this way in various locations. That's a good way to determine that it's probably your UHF radio. Well, how do you fix it? You can't exactly shield your UHF radio because it still has to talk to your aircraft. Well, you can filter your radio, which sometimes works, but if the emissions come out the case, which is often the point, often, oftentimes the actual problem, the only thing you can do is simply move further away from your ground station and to a place where your ground station isn't listening. This again is where front to back ratio comes in handy. If you use a directional antenna that's listening out front with no side lobes, you can simply stand very far behind it. So let's say a crosshair or a pepper box simply moves further behind it, or even on a crosshair, you can even move to the side and behind it. Whereas an omnidirectional antenna, your only choice is simply to move further and further and further away. So you're simply going to have to make longer and longer AV cables from your viewing screen to your ground station. Another problem that people have is with what is called the Fresnel zone. The Fresnel zone and violating it mostly means you're violating visual line of sight. That means there's some competing object between your transmitter and your receiver. This can be anything from trees to houses to hills to anything. Well, how do you defeat a Fresnel zone violation? Well, you really can't defeat it. You just deal with it. One way to beat Fresnel zone violations is simply to use a lower frequency. The lower the frequency, the better the system is going to be to defeat problems in the Fresnel zone. Also, don't fly behind dense objects. Ob signals will penetrate trees much better than they will, say, a house or a hill. So if you're going to fly behind objects, one thing you might have to do to defeat that is simply raise your antenna higher in the air or choose a lower frequency. Now the nice thing about the Fresnel zone is when you violate it, usually the solution is to throttle and climb. And usually if that object will slip out of that Fresnel zone. The last problem you run into is that you're simply out of range. This, believe it or not, is one of the least frequent problems people have, is simply being out of range. Usually the noise floor is what takes you out because the noise floor is higher than your sensitivity. In order to fix this problem, there are a few solutions. One, you can increase transmit power. Two, you can increase your receiver antenna gain and aim the beam at your aircraft. Another thing, interestingly enough, is use a lower frequency. Lower frequency signals travel further. 
So simply stepping to a lower frequency might be the best solution. Well, how do I know if I'm out of range? Well, let's say I just have uh, omni antennas, okay? What range can I expect on, say, 500 milliwatts with omnis? Assuming the noise floor isn't what's taking you out, it's actually the receiver sensitivity. On 900 megahertz omnis at 500 milliwatts, your range capability should be close to 12 or so miles. On 1.3 gigahertz, it's closer to eight or nine miles. At 2.4 gigahertz, it's four or so, four, maybe five miles. And at 5.8 gigahertz, it's approximately two to three miles. So lower frequencies travel further. But you also know that frequencies have noise floor problems. So you don't want to change to a frequency where something's nearby transmitting on your band. So keep in mind that your problem is most commonly the noise floor. And that's what you want to fix. I might be crazy. Keep your wings in the sky.